Hey, good morning. My name is Andrea Smith, and I have the privilege of being the pastor here at West, and we are so glad that you are choosing to spend some time with us this morning or throughout the week and uh, check out what we're all about. If you are new here, we would invite you to text the number that you see on the screen. Text the word welcome. We have a gift we would love to send you and send you just a little information about who we are as a church, and then if you choose, you can invest more more in us and, and get our communication or not. It's up to you. But if you text the word welcome to 704-343-8955, 704-343-8955, and let us know uh, that you are newer to the West community, we would be so grateful. So this morning, we are closing up finishing up our message series on temperaments. Our temperaments are different than our personalities. Our temperaments are the way that we are innately wired. Our personalities change and and grow and and deepen as we age, as we become more uh, wise and emotionally intelligent, our personalities develop. But our temperaments, now that's just the way that we are innately created, and we're all created differently, and, and there's four different temperaments. These date back to the time of Plato and Socrates and Aristotle, and it's it's really spot on. In fact, the video that Josh chose for us this morning, it could not be more perfect. We will send out a link to that tomorrow to you so you can go back and, and watch and, and pay close attention to your temperament and then the temperaments of the people that you are in relationship with. I promise that it, this is invaluable information for healthy relationships, personally, professionally. Uh, it just really is good stuff. In fact, uh, for the opening illustration, I'm going to show you some stuff from our serve day yesterday at Mooresville Christian Mission. It was funny. I was working in one part of the food pantry, and then I heard some folks a few rows over talking about how their uh, task was geared towards their temperament. And I'm like, wow, okay, we're actually listening and, and paying attention, and it's making a difference. I laughed just now at that video because it started with sanguine, and that's what I am, yellow, and then cleric is my second color. And it said, you know, yellow people, sanguines are easily devastated. And I'm like, that's it. I am easily <laughs> devastated. Uh, you can look at me sideways or say something that hurts my feelings and my feelings are so easily hurt. And it just, it wipes me out, you know, like I'm weeping. And so uh, the video was spot on. So I'd invite you tomorrow to go back and, and watch it again. It was a great resource for us this morning. And this morning's message, is going to be a little different. So the lady that wrote the book, that is, uh, this is what I said, this is how you heard it, uh, Kathleen Eidelman, she is, she has been doing, she did a series and she did like different uh, sessions with this group of people and they are all the four different temperaments. And so today, as we end together, I wanted to show you her interacting with the four different types of people. I really just felt like the way and the, the way that they shared with one another and the things that they said, it was just so insightful. So uh, the message bulk is going to be that video, and I don't want you to panic. Uh, the video is like 33 minutes long. I think do not panic and think, oh my gosh, then she's going to talk another 35 minutes. That is not the case. I have one closing illustration I want to share with you, and then we will all go on our merry, uh, our merry way. But it's it's a powerful video, so I really hope that you will watch and be in touch with that this morning. One of the things that we're called to do as uh, children of God, followers of Christ, or if you're not either of those, just as being kind people, is to pay attention to how we impact others. It's up to us to uh, pay attention to what those in our lives need. Instead of thinking about what I need and, and what I want from other people, we need to start thinking about how our words impact those that we are around 
words hurt and they sting and they can tear us down so quickly. And so that's the whole point of this message series. If you're checking us out for the first time and you haven't been a part of the series, all our, our messages are online on our YouTube channel or on our website. I do invite you to go back and, and listen to them and take the temperament test. It really is just insightful information. If we pay attention to it, our relationships will be stronger, healthier, and we will be happier and people that are so much more at peace. But we've got to take what we learn and, and apply it. So I would invite us to do that today. Uh, take a look at this song and then we'll dive right in. This is about understanding people to the core. Figuring out what you said and what they heard and eliminating this gray area in between. By you understanding your authentic wiring, you'll become the very best version of yourself. What we will be learning about is temperaments, which is the why behind your personality. All of your relationships, every decision you make, and every word you speak. This is going to be a fun journey. It has been a fun journey talking about our temperaments and, and learning about ourselves. And uh, it was so good to see some of you yesterday at our serve day. The staff and I, we are planning in-person events uh, during the week. And we're going to have one a week starting when Lent starts. Uh, so I, I just want you to be mindful of that. We have missed you. And we are looking forward to gathering together in small crowds. And then we are planning an uh, in-person launch for late summer. So we're excited about that too. But uh, yesterday we were joking about all the different temperaments. And, and so I just want to remind us, uh, like, it's more than just our words when we uh, act out of our temperaments. So like more than just our spoken words, we use in today's society text and email equally as our verbal words. And so I want to show you a picture of what someone thought would be very funny to show me uh, today. Uh, they sent me this email referencing a ball game that perhaps happened last night. I am a fan of anybody but Carolina. I was born in Durham, so I've been a Duke girl all my life, and I just thought Mike Jeminski, I'm dating myself, was the hottest thing ever, and so I fell in love with Duke basketball, and so I just bristle when Carolina wins. So thank you, friend, for sending me these pictures this morning. I don't know if you thought I'd show them in worship, but yeah. So congrats on the Carolina win, not. But anyway, I just wanted to be mindful of like when we send emails like this, that is the same thing as speaking audibly to someone. And our words really matter. And we've got to start thinking about how our words are coming across to the people that receive them. That's what it's like to be a follower of Christ, is to think about, okay, not me first, but the receiver. And that is so hard to do because we are wired to think about ourselves first, but to act in the way of Christ is to think about those that we are communicating with, how they hear it and how they receive it. And it's up to us to be the person communicating that they need us to be. And it's a journey, right? And none of us are perfect. So when we mess up, we say we're sorry and, and we try to be better. But it takes that honest and open communication and vulnerability. And so I really hope that this message series has been impactful to you. And I really do think today when we end our time together, you're going to be like, okay, wow. So the temperaments, they really do matter. Yesterday we were at Mooresville Christian Ministry Mission, and we were working in various parts of that organization. And like I told you a few minutes ago, I heard some folks on the other side of the shelves that we were stocking so that their clients and guests on Tuesday can come in and, and go to like a version of a grocery store. I heard someone say, this, like putting up these canned goods is geared exactly towards my temperament. And I thought, 
that's what's wrong. That is why I have so much like anxiety right now. I want to show you a picture or a few pictures of like what my area was. I was stocking shelves and that actually was the most soothing, calm thing when I was doing the goldfish. You know, it was not complicated to put the goldfish on the shelves. I was a little anxious because they wouldn't all line up right. Uh, but, you know, I was, I was trying to get over that. But then, like, my next task was to do the Lance crackers. And at first, I was just putting all the boxes up and just putting them in front of each other and not grouping them together. And then I heard the ladies on the other side of the shelves talking about their temperaments. And I knew uh, our missions team leader, she was talking about uh, her temperament. She's cleric, and so she's very organized. And she gets things done, or one of our missions chair people, and, and she's just this amazing leader. So when I heard her say that, I had to go look at her shelves, and like, oh my gosh, it was like canned corn, tomatoes, uh, and perfect. Like, she could have a job in any grocery store immediately, and I went back and looked at my little Lance crackers, and they, my shelves did not look anything like this at that point. Like, I had one box in front of another, and they were all different colors and they were just so festive. I thought, look how cool. You know, it's just such a variety of Lance crackers and the clients can come and just be like, oh, wow. And then I saw their canned vegetables and I had a canned good envy. I'm like, why did theirs look so nice and organized and mine do not? And, and she was talking about her temperament. And I'm like, that's what's wrong. I'm sanguine. So like chaos, my world is chaos. And I thrive, frankly, in chaos. I do best when there's a lot going on and when I'm not like pigeonholed. And so I'm like, okay, but this is not about me and making the shelves look colorful. This is about people being able to get what they want. So then by the time I finished with the whole Lance Cracker thing, I was so frustrated because I want you look at this next slide. Now, just in this box alone, there's so many different kinds, and I had spent hours trying to make the shelves look so equal and have equal Captain Wafers and Toasty and Nico and all these crackers, and then at the very end, I opened up one more case to try to fill in the missing holes and I'll be darned, there was this box called Whole Grain. Who knew that Lance Crackers now makes Whole Grain? I mean, and I had like hundreds of boxes on the shelves, and then I saw that one, and I'm like, forget it. I'm just sticking it in and, and not going to worry about it. That's my temperament. I'm just going to make it fit and make it work. But other temperaments, they're very organized, very structured. Others are geared towards harmony and peace and and harmonious relationships, and the other one is geared towards perfection and order. So here on the screen, you can see just an overview of the four kinds, yellow, red, green, and blue. And I want you to pay attention to the colors right now, because in the video that you're getting ready to watch with uh, Kathleen, the people, the panel that she's talking to, they have on the color of their temperament. So it's this great great visual aid. So when they start talking, you can notice, okay, well, she has on yellow. Uh, that is the color of sanguine, and, and that's who I know that's that color, or red, choleric. And uh, it's just an insightful and powerful tool that I want us to end with today. So I ask you just to sit back, get comfortable, and let's watch together, Kathleen. Take a look. <laughs> All right, I'm glad to be back with you. Now we've covered a lot of ground so far. Strengths, weaknesses, needs, manipulating words. But mostly, you've been working on what that means for you. You've looked at your temperament, your strengths and weaknesses. You spent time this week defining your needs. That's the foundation of this framework. You've gotta know that stuff first. And getting yourself healthy, working from your strengths is definitely step one. As Kathleen puts it, you can't give what you don't have. It's like when the flight attendant says, put your own oxygen mask on first before assisting others. We've got to start by working on ourselves. So if that's where we stopped, you'd have taken some big steps. You'd hopefully have lots of takeaways. Understanding your own temperament will definitely improve your communication. But we don't want to stop there. That's only half the puzzle. We want to apply it 
to others. Ephesians 4.29 isn't about how others talk to us. It's about how we talk to others. And the win is right there at the end of the verse, that it may benefit all who listen. Building others up with our words is good for them, but it's also good for us. It benefits all. So let me tell you a quick story that proves that point. My friend struggled for months to get her daughter out of bed in the mornings for school. My friend is red, so she'd bust in the door, throw on the lights and bark, time to get up. Then every five minutes, she'd come back and yell, hurry up, you've got to move faster. And the more she yelled, the slower her daughter went. Until my friend figured out that her daughter's temperament is green, which means she needs harmony and lack of stress, the exact opposite of what she was getting. Is anyone else having a light bulb moment? This exact same scene happens at my house like every single morning, maybe yours too. So anyway, the next morning, my friend ditched the yelling and instead sat down, rubbed her daughter's back and told her breakfast was ready whenever she got dressed. And you know what? It worked. She was up and out the door and it didn't require any yelling. And the best news for my red friend, it was so much more efficient. To use Paul's words, it benefited all. Letting temperaments guide how you talk to people is a win-win. So I bet you've been thinking about someone as we've gone along. Maybe something Leslie said sounded just like your mom, or Jeremy reminds you of that guy on your team, or maybe you wish you could figure out the temperament of someone in your life. You're wondering, how can I get them to take the assessment? That's great. We want you to be curious. We hope considering other people's temperaments is a habit for the rest of your life. Kathleen's gonna show us how we can figure it out without making them take any tests. Let's jump back in with her. Welcome back. Hey. This is the session that I really like a lot because this is where in my office, people are really just throwing descriptive words <laughs> around, yeah. right? And they're almost recklessly putting people in boxes, okay? Mm -hmm. And that looks like this. Leslie, oh, she's such a good leader. She's red. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or Tony, she's so funny. She's yellow. That quickly, we're putting people in boxes. And this isn't about putting people in boxes. Yes. This is about understanding people to the core. Sure. Because what we want to understand is, Leslie is a dynamic leader. She's wired to be a dynamic leader of tasks. But Jeremy's a great leader of people, OK? Mm -hmm. So we, what we understand is you're innately wired to be a leader, but all the temperaments can be a good leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't own, the callers yeah. don't own leadership, just like for the sanguines. They don't own funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're fun to be around, they're fun in groups, but they're not owning funny. In fact, the melancholies are very funny. Most of the famous comedians of the world you to that which mm -hmm. you are going to be one day <laughs> are melancholy right. right so we want to try to be very careful about putting people in, from descriptive words into categories okay mm -hmm. what we want to find out is what's in their core what's really motivating them mm -hmm. we want to find out what's the why behind their behavior mm -hmm. okay yeah. we want to be very careful we're not reacting to the what's they're saying or doing but we're responding to the whys that they're saying or doing mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so in that gray area that i spoke about before when leslie talks i hear and when mm -hmm. i talk she hears so there's all this gray area that we want to address. So if she and I went to a uh, lunch and we're laughing and joking and telling stories, we have a great friendship or relationship, but we may leave that lunch and I'm thinking, did she really hear me? Mm -hmm. Does she un really understand what I said? And she may be thinking, is Kathleen going to get that done? Hmm. I'm not sure she's going to get that done. I don't know if she got the bottom line, right? Because I'm in my lens and my thought and she's in hers right? Mm -hmm. So we really want to take that and get it to here yeah. so that I'm saying words that build her up so she doesn't leave wondering and she the same to me. Yeah. So we're loving each other better. Mm. Okay. So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're doing that and we're understanding people to the core. So tell me, Tony, tell me a little bit about somebody you might be curious about. Um, so I, I think we're still in the newlywed phase, my husband and I. We're okay. two years into the game, almost. Um, and so I'm just trying to figure out what he is. We spend a lot of time together. Okay. And so, and we spend lots of time 
personally, mm -hmm. ministry-wise, there's business there. It's kind of all mixed up. Okay. And so I feel like I'm experiencing him just in all these different ways. And so okay. I'm just trying to figure out what, what's what, the consistency what, in the what, color. Yeah. What, one of the goals in my office is that people stay in honeymoon relationship. Oh. Mm. Because when people get married, they've thrown all their strengths on the table while they're dating, mm -hmm. if you remember. Yeah. 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 And what happens once you get married yeah. is guess what starts rearing its head? Weaknesses. The weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And we immediately start to try to change that person to be wow. more like us. So that's the first thing you want to be aware of is, is this confusion because I'm moving away from the things that drew me to Sam. Mm. So what I want you to do really quick, I want okay. you to tell me three reasons why you fell in love with him. Really oh, quick. Okay. Why? So I know it's okay, like I'm a sorry. game. It's I'm a game. Honeymoon, Just honeymoon. tell me. Okay. It's okay. What, what, um, what did okay. you love about him? I'm so overwhelmed. Um, it's fun. There's no okay. timer. He's so funny. He's so funny. Okay. And he's like funny. life of the party. Okay. Loud laugh. Yeah. Him, him and I have like a very similar laugh. So that's great. very fun. Okay. Um, he's just such a great leader. Okay. He's, he's a leader worth following. He's very dominant. Mm -hmm. He knows where he's going. Okay. He's so confident. That's right. the third one, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's like second, third. Okay. But he's so confident. Okay. He's fearless. He mm -hmm. knows who he is. He's mm -hmm. not changing. He's not bending. Mm -hmm. He knows like exactly what he wants all okay. the time. There. And so, yeah. So when you explain, yeah, this is good, that. Uh, and no, okay. that's good. It's, it, but that's what I do because yeah. I'm telling you, I ask that question in my office and a hundred percent of the time, and this is no exaggeration in decades, yeah. people will describe their spouse when they were dating in their strengths Yeah. because you mm -hmm. threw your strengths on the table. Yeah. You were your best version of you, right? Mm -hmm. And what I heard you say for Sam was yeah. fearless leader, mm -hmm. you know, knows himself, authentic, right? Yeah. But funny and fun to be with. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. he's up there. I would say he's probably like definitely a, a choleric, a red, yellow, right? But isn't that what you are as well? I'm a yellow, red. <laughs> okay. so I don't know if that makes it So different. you have two people that are loud and powerful. Yes. So Andrew, who are you most curious about? Yeah, I'm a little bit curious about my brother because okay. um, we're pretty close in age and grew up together and okay. we always seem to kind of contrast each other personality okay. wise. All right. So I don't think he's a blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You um, didn't sit quietly and read books or anything or no, play Legos? Uh, not, no. No? Unless, <laughs> unless he, unless I was doing it, then he could come knock him over. There, yeah. there you go. But, uh, but I have, I am interested to know how much of that is being a younger brother and mm -hmm. wanting attention, mm -hmm. and how much of it might be him just being a different personality type. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, I knew that he always did want attention from me. Okay. What and did that look like? So when I we lived in the same room until I think I was twelve, and then okay. I got my own room, which okay. I was very happy about. Yeah, I bet you was were. Like, what am I <laughs> supposed to do with my own room? <laughs> yeah. it, did he really react like that? I like, think what so, am yeah. I supposed to do with all this space? Right. He yeah. was like, I got two sinks. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do yeah. with that other sink? Right. But um, but then he, uh, my parents were trying to be intentional about respecting that I had my own room now. So they said, here, you can't go in Andrew's room unless he invites you in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so I did not work? invite him in Zero very often. Invitations. Zero invitations. <laughs> not a lot of invitations. Yeah, they kept getting lost in the mail. It's like, hey, uh, I'm heading out. If you want to go in my room right now, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, he's sick, but also don't. Uh, but don't, don't touch don't, your don't, neck. Don't touch yeah. anything. Yeah. Right. But he would come, and what he would do is he would stand as close to the edge oh, of my God. room as he could and stand there and say, I'm not in your room. Uh, I'm not in your room. <laughs> It's a little oh, taunt wow. you. And, it would, and like you said, I would yeah. get, instead of getting angry, I would get frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I'm mad at you. I'd say I'm, you're annoying me. Yep, mm. which is another and, um, and that happened a lot. So what do you think now as you look back at that moment, seeing him stand on the mm -hmm. other side of the threshold, what was he looking for from you? Yeah, he was looking for affection from mm -hmm. me and approval from me. Mm -hmm. um, but also, he just liked to be with people. Yeah. Yeah. And I was his brother. I was mm -hmm. his peer in the house. Yeah. And the closest to him, really. Yes. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So by default, right. you know, without knowing the temperament stuff that you know now, mm -hmm. where are you at now? With what I think he is? Yeah, where you're at in your relationship. Like, oh, we're where great you, now. You're well, great yeah, now. Yeah, we're best friends now. Yeah. yeah so how did you thing. get there? I, I'm, uh, I'm curious because, you know, some of this you find out by trial and error. 
Right. You know, not just sitting in a group and learning about it, but, right. but how did you get there? Well, we stopped living in the same house. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Step <laughs> one, check. Right. Okay. But and I think don't do that if you're married. <laughs> yeah, that's not necessarily <laughs> yeah, for everybody. Yeah. If you're married, stay at your house. If you're married, right. stay at your house and work on some other skills. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, so that's not always the answer. Right. <laughs> but, um, but I think even though we didn't really know, you know, what our colors were or any right. of this stuff, I think we did start to recognize what each other needed from okay. the other person, where I realized I need to give him attention sometimes and mm -hmm. just be really intentional about doing that. And he realized he needed to give me more space. And mm -hmm. if we were gonna hang out, I probably needed us to have a plan and mm -hmm. him not just come over. Right, and just winging it. But also I learned to be more accepting of um, of his kind of spontaneity and trying to embrace that in him, I think. Right. But it, um, but it is funny to think back now, I'm thinking he's probably a yellow. Yes. Um, but it's interesting to think back to our childhood and our dynamic, and now it makes so much sense to me why we had this kind of, why can't we ever be on the same page with because what we want to do? Because you were literally polar opposites right. of each other, mm -hmm. which really, truly, that's why opposites attract when you get married, mm -hmm. really, truly makes mm -hmm. the strongest bond. Mm -hmm. But it takes the biggest sacrifice because sure. their strengths are your weaknesses right. and your strengths are their weaknesses. But when we're willing not to stay in the strengths, He's annoying, right? You know, you're too private. You know, what's wrong with you? You're too quiet. You're too frustrating, right? Mm -hmm. And we throw these things instead of what I love you said. You embraced his spontaneity, mm -hmm. you know, and he's probably still like that now, right? Oh yeah. Because people don't change. That's the thing. We're not going to change anybody. We're going to embrace them, and then we're going to love them better by influencing and understanding that their wiring is different for a purpose. Have you oh, come to cute. appreciate his strengths? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's great because he pushes me, and he knows kind of how to mm. do that without overwhelming me. But mm. when he kind of can recognize what my needs are, he mm -hmm. can. we kind of help each other pull into our directions, mm. I think. Leslie, do you have anybody you're curious about? You know, it's an interesting stage in our life because my father, who's now 85, mm -hmm. Uh, came to live with us three years ago, and he'll be with us for the rest of his life, which okay. could be quite a while because yeah. his health continues and this is to your improve. Dad? My father. Okay. And I haven't lived with my father since I was 12 years old. Oh, so let's wow. just say I didn't tell you my age, but it was a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so although I know him, I don't know him. Okay. And Fair. I haven't, I haven't got a clue. Okay. What temperament he is. Okay. So tell me a little bit about what you do remember. Do you remember much as a child? Um, uh, I remember him behind the newspaper mm -hmm. when I was little okay. um, and in, impatient with us if we would try to interrupt him while he was behind the newspaper. Mm, okay. Um, he traveled a lot for work, so he was absent from the family a lot, okay. even when my parents were still married. And... And what about now when you're very seeing solitary, him? very solitary, but okay. he loves, loves, loves his people, mm -hmm. um, his people, his people Can and only that? his people. Mm -hmm. He's completely antisocial outside the family mm -hmm. and the people he's the most bonded to are the people he spent the most time with, which mm -hmm. is actually his step children, step grandchildren and step great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So there's and a now, comfort there. And now living here, mm -hmm. um, he's most fond of the grandchildren who have been born since he moved here because he's been with them since birth. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, so yeah, he's so. extremely deep on the relational side, hmm. but Another also, keyword. but also very quiet in okay. his daily routine. So, yeah. So what do you think? Blue. Sounds blue to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Does it? Do you like connect with that right there? Just Absolutely. did you hear the descriptive word she did use? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah. Well, I definitely picked up on safety with him being more comfortable talking to the people that mm -hmm. he's. Uh, really f familiar with and mm -hmm. valuing that quality time. Because we're nurturers. Right, The closer absolutely. you are, the more protective the blue is okay. of that deep relationship of the people that they truly trust and love. Oh, okay. Yeah, right? and to know one of his, or some of his grandkids since birth, I mean, that's very yeah. deep. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. Yeah, what, what, was, your, what was your thing? It's how did, so you, cool. how did okay. you connect with that? I really want to know that you're getting no, this. Honestly, and, it's it's interesting because I think I just keep getting shocked that uh -huh. there are so there are people in this world that are just so different from me. Mm -hmm. And I guess what my thought my aha moment was, you know, honestly, how can I become someone and say words to someone like that? Mm -hmm. It was just so I I couldn't even the thoughts were running through my mind. I'm like everybody's family, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I'm close to everybody. <laughs> yeah. And now you just heard, my friends. Yeah. You that know? there's others that don't but feel and others, think that and way. It's, and I, I, one of my questions were, how do I become that for someone? Mm-hmm. How do I get close enough mm-hmm. so that they can nurture and feel safe? And, mm-hmm. and, and what so do you know now you could do? Um, use words. Yeah. I mean, that you could use sweet. words Maybe calm down that as well. fill their love tank. Yeah. yeah, check yourself. Are you yeah. in your weaknesses? Yeah. Are you presenting yourself in your strengths? And are you pouring into that person to mm-hmm. lift them up according to what they need? Yeah. So my son, who's five. Okay. Um, I feel like he's all over the map okay. sometimes um, with, um, we thought, oh, he's going to be an engineer. He, he really likes to take things apart and put them back together. Okay. He loves trains. He's okay. loved trains for the past mm-hmm. three years. Um, mm-hmm. So see some melancholy, but mm-hmm. then uh, his teacher this year um, has said that he's one of the two most social kids in his class. Really? That okay. He, you know, all the kids think he's their friend. Um, oh, how sweet. Sometimes when he comes home, we ask him, who'd you play with? Mm-hmm. He'll have a name and mm-hmm. he'll, it'll be consistent for a little while. And then He'll say, I, you know, I didn't have anybody today, or mm-hmm. but like usually there's there's somebody there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he has these temper tantrums. Oh. Um, on the way home last night, I was leaving work kind of late and um, driving home. My wife was already at a restaurant with our kids. Mm-hmm. I found out later and ended up inviting another friend with with her kids. Okay. And so. I just knew I was coming into something. I was not going into <laughs> a lack sure. of stress situation. <laughs> or harmony. Uh, or harmony. Mm-hmm. I, I was going into a stressful situation. Um, but I didn't know completely what it was. It's okay. just, just my wife alluded to something big's happening. So I found out later what it was, was he just started yelling mm-hmm. in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. Like, and was getting angry and wanted my wife's attention. Mm-hmm. He had let her know that along the mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. Um, and she was trying to communicate to him, like, I'm, I'm gonna pay attention to you. I'm talking mm-hmm. to my friend right now. Mm-hmm. You know, let, wait, wait, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And he didn't want any of that. So yeah. he started yelling. Then my three-year-old also <laughs> so started yelling, erupted. wanted her as well. Right. So our friend took the three-year-old away, so my wife could okay. work with our son. Yeah. And those are great examples because that's where I'm talking about understanding it to the core. Because we could immediately think because he started yelling, he must be a red Mm -hmm. or he's doing a tantrum of a yellow, Mm -hmm. right? But really what I heard in that story, the thread was still very deeply blue Mm. because there's the order, right? Even the classroom setting is something that when a melancholy is in their strengths, which children are a lot, Mm -hmm. right? Just his politeness, hmm. just his, you know, ability to just be there and, and be thoughtful has the appearance that he's very social because people do are attracted to melancholies that are safe, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the fact is you said he's named one name when you asked him. He didn't name, oh, I can't, like my daughter would say when I, she came home from school, I'd say, who did you play with? <laughs> oh, I had a new friend. In fact, I had three. Oh, who are they? Well, I don't know their names. Yeah. You know, I just know they're, they're my, my new, new friends. Fr- they're my new best they're friends. My new, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And even now as a senior, you just, she says the same thing, right? But wow. he actually named a name. Do you see? So wow. this is listening to understand, okay? This is another really key point because most people listen, listen to respond or answer or react. Halfway through of what they're listening, oh. they're already mm-hmm. forming something to say, right? So good. But if you listen to understand, you guys will also see that kind of thread that goes through mm. your sweet, very melancholy boy mm. with the order. The tantrum, this is again the diff- where I want you to be very good at listening to the words and how to apply them. The melancholy gets very frustrated, mm-hmm. where the color it gets very angry. Actually, the second one that gets the most angry is the sanguine, believe it or not. They're the quickest to anger, (laughs) right, when they don't get their way. But the melancholy, on the other hand, gets frustrated. And that's what it sounded like he was getting at your wife, was frustrated because he was not being heard. That's right. The other day he was trying to do something impossible, basically, Right. was what I was telling him. He was trying to put two trains together, Mm -hmm. link them together, and there was no link, Mm -hmm. and continued to get frustrated. And... I was thinking, he's getting angry. Mm -mm. It was really frustration. Yeah. 
Hmm. Do you identify that with that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah for so me to get angry, nothing... I've been frustrated for a while first. <laughs> Be, right, yeah. right? Wow. And totally. when you're not being heard, see, that's one of the melancholy things is being heard and understood. Mm -hmm. So when you have you're constantly trying to be heard have sure. you felt that same frustration that he's talking about i think so yeah, yeah. i don't because i would be less likely to have a drive-through moment <laughs> like had, and much more back. likely to have a um being frustrated to the point where that feels like the only option mm -hmm. maybe. or so, yeah. to just leave right yeah like, or just leave right yeah that's what, and I that's guess what. Your, your son probably couldn't he couldn't, <laughs> he couldn't just, just leave, just leave. So. Mm -hmm. no. yeah i'm just curious you know what would you tell me about how to talk mm. to a green person mm. if I want to get, if I want to motivate them and have them feel good about what they're doing, um, knowing that I'm red and would tend more toward being directive? And it mm -hmm. sounds like that's not going to, it's not going to work <laughs> real well. It hasn't work worked always well. well. Um, even though I am green, I, I love having a boss who is red. Um, mm -hmm. She's Interesting. my favorite really? boss I've ever had um, in my life. Oh wow! Worked with her for eight years and. Um, wow. I like her directness, um, but it's because there's so much of a relationship that mm. that's built on. Oh. Um, so mm. if you'll ask me, you know, if, if you were my boss, if you'd ask me about my family, my kids, okay. share with me even some thoughts in a respectful way, like not you're telling me what to do, but like, hey, this worked or didn't work when I was raising kids, um, and go there personally then I'll be wow. more bought in really cool. to hear from you professionally. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well. So we, we would go into one-on-ones without a big agenda. Okay. It was more, hey, what's on your mind, Jeremy? You know, what did you want to talk about? And then she would have a few things Got on it. her list. Um, so the beginning, it's kind of like, how are you doing? How's your family doing? And she would share with me about even what was going on in her family. So. It, I felt trust from her, and okay. I, I felt very loyal to her. Wow. Because okay. it brought feeling of worth, respect, uh -huh. lack of stress, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if Leslie was your boss and she came into that one-on-one, -on -one, okay, here's what we're going over. Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, bottom line. You got no. that? No. Here's the time frame. How, what, would, what would your response be? I, I wouldn't be excited about the next one. <laughs> where, where I always <laughs> came into these like, almost like, um, this is going to be... An encouraging, not mm -hmm. counseling, but almost counseling, like <laughs> you know, session mm -hmm. of, you know, we're going to connect, um, we're going to get things done, in in that, at the same time. So the things I heard you say are relationship first, mm -hmm. and how how would she demonstrate that she's for you, like in the work context of yeah. the work together? I mean, she would go above and beyond, um, for like schooling, education, Got it. supervising through that process. Um, there was an interest she took in my career path Got it. beyond mm. what I was currently doing. Got it. Which Got is it. extremely important from a phlegmatic because their potential is great. But what we have to understand from that particular temperament is that say the potential's a 10, they may go to an eight and be perfectly content. Okay. to stay at an eight. And uh, it drives especially choleric parents mm -hmm. ballistic mm -hmm. because you see the potential to 10 and you're like, why is he leaving all that on the table when mm -hmm. they're perfectly content with it? Wow. So it's that understanding of, you know, where that contentment's mm -hmm. from, right? Mm -hmm. You know, where it sits and then you being okay with that as well. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. Does that help with your coworker? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Do greens advocate for themselves well? So I think if I'm in my strengths, mm -hmm. I can advocate uh, okay. for myself. I enjoy negotiating and okay. um, I enjoy achieving and, and looking for what's next. Mm -hmm. And until there are times in my life where I have gotten to that content place, I've been like, oh, I, could, I think I could see myself doing this for a lot of years. Okay. Um, and you know, I wanna make it better and do, do better at it but like wow. not looking for the next thing. That is so different <laughs> for me because uh -huh. almost as soon as I start moving toward the next milestone, I'm already looking for the exit ramp. Mm. Um, exactly. Because wow. continuing like the, the routine managerial type of work is mm. not at all life-giving to me. 
So I'm looking for who's good at that, mm -hmm. who can step in behind me and carry it forward once right. it's steady. Mm -hmm. Right. Because um, well, I just want to do the next the front thing. end. Yeah. 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 I want to go deep. And wow. Yeah. No. Wild. Not yeah. so mm -hmm. much. So that's do you hard. see? That's that's burdensome for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Do you see how you can mm -hmm. just take a moment and ask the other temperament? because they do see through a different lens. Mm -hmm. And literally, you're learning things, and you've probably mm -hmm. been a boss and a coach and a leader to a lot of people yeah, in your job. for a long time. This will probably badly. Literally Thanks for bringing that <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure you are very respectful. But do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it will change it from this point on. Yeah. It will forever be different now. Yeah. Just by this little conversation you had with Jeremy, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask you a question on behalf of both Andrew and I, because we're both <laughs> thinking it. How do we tell you mm -hmm. when you're too much? Mm. Listen, it is <laughs> words, what words oh, that oh, what, really, what's literally the words yeah. that we could say because we do not yeah. do anything that's going to hurt somebody else's feelings. For sure. Like we will take it, right? Yeah. Right. Um, and take it, uh, but we're, we're in the car going, oh my God, they're yeah. driving me crazy today. Oh, I right? know exactly. So what words could we do to um, say, you know? It hits, I think it hits maybe two of my innate needs. Okay. It is um, approval mm -hmm. and acceptance. Okay. If you if you could validate those two first, hey, I like the person that you are. Okay. I accept you for who you are. I've invited you into my world. Okay. Then make it personal. Don't make it about me. Make it about you. Oh, my oh. gosh. That sounds so horrible. No, no. We're asking but you. It's true. We're asking you. Um, it's, hey, I'm overwhelmed by mm -hmm. you right now. Not you are overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like, right. it doesn't mean, I don't know if that no, makes sense at all, but that means what is, hey, I'm, yeah, I'm overwhelmed <laughs> yeah, right now. That's what we would do naturally. I'm feeling, yeah. you know, and you know, if you, you know, can you, can you maybe help me with that? And mm -hmm. then I'm a, I'm a helper, so I'm automatically gonna lean in. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like, what okay. can I do? Mm -hmm. I, whatever so, you need. So we're almost asking for help to get away from you. <laughs> <laughs> like, please help me what, get you to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Listen. Yes. That's it. Because here's a, the, that just the took reason me out I of the game. That, <laughs> <laughs> That's why the reason I asked was because of a story with Garrett. Oh, is because oh, yeah, okay, melancholies, yeah. you know, when we're doing work, we really would rather not be interrupted. Yeah. Because then we have to start all the way at the top again and go from the beginning. So, yeah. uh, you know, if you were to co be coming into Andrew's office, you know, <laughs> And hey, talking and telling we'll stories, even though you're his boss, right? Mm. I would like him to know how would he address that That's with really you, cool. yeah. and say, wow. you know, would you mind knocking or, you know, I, hey, everything about this, I really am overwhelmed. Hey, I'm with in the this, middle of or, concentrating on something. Exactly. Can I yeah. come see you in 20 minutes mm -hmm. when I finish what I'm doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, look at would you that be talking okay? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yes, but not that stern, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see? That was, that really wasn't really stern. Oh, you have to start with a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you checking on me. I mean, ask oh, a question. Yeah, I appreciate you, you I checking love, on me. I yes. love, the, I love yeah. what you're talking about. I can't wait to hear about this. Can I come see you in 20 minutes when yes. I finish what I'm focused on? It's a lot on? nice, but thank you so okay. much. Okay. <laughs> wow. No, no, but that that's some heavy lifting. So you even just had an aha moment, too. It was. Because you just went out of boat into two other lenses well, that you yeah. weren't even. Yeah. Because yeah. what's honest is what you orange. said wasn't <laughs> it was, bad. It wasn't red or yellow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the honest truth is what you said wasn't bad. It literally was only the tone. And I don't, I don't even, I didn't even really remember what you said because I got so overwhelmed by your tone. Really? Yeah, but when okay, I look then. back, I'm like, oh, I'm being sensitive. What you said actually was good. I'm just, I was like, hmm. So it. see, it's the, even the choice of the words. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why I'm asking you to pause because I want you to be so aware of the words you use That's so good. because they may not go into the heart of the person you're speaking mm -hmm. to. Remember, mm -hmm. each word is a gift, right? Yeah. So, so look good. at this. You're, you're talking with each other, which is really what I want. I really want wow. everybody to get to a place where you feel comfortable leaning into somebody. I, don't, I really would rather the temperaments not be a secret. Mm -hmm. I would rather yeah. you say, I see you're wired differently than me. Help me by doing something, right? Wow, yeah. And you're doing so good at this. This is something that you can do even with strangers. I mean, we've talked a lot about people we already have relationships with, mm -hmm. but people are gonna be put in your path today. And God is a God of perfect order and timing. So each one has been strategically put to cross your path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's a coincidence, even the person that's the checkout person at Publix, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So. Um, I'm going down the Publix checkout line and it's a girl behind the counter and she's doing, I have a choice at that moment. 
I have a fork in the road at that very moment to, to choose wholesome words and to make a choice of how I'm going to behave and yeah. what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So I say, hey, how's well. your day going? And she goes, oh my gosh, my day's going great. I'm going to Athens this weekend. A group of my girlfriends are going to yeah. get together. You know, I think she's going to get engaged. It's going to be so much fun. What is she? Yellow. Right. So I got just in that, how are you doing today? Look wow. at the answer right. I got. Yeah. I can, I'm at a fork in the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can choose my strengths. Mm -hmm. I can get out of my own way and I can say, wow, that is fun. All those girlfriends together in one place, you are going to have an amazing time. That's mm. going to be so much fun. And having girlfriends like that, what a blessing that is, right? Yeah. And she's going to be, you were even like, yeah, yeah. right? Oh my right? God. Look at her light up. Okay, now I choose to stay selfish. And I say, really? You're driving all the way to Athens today? Did you see the weather? It is going to be stormy. I don't Gosh. even think that's safe. I'm, you girls aren't going to be drinking, are you? You know, huh? Right? That's me in my very blue. Yeah. Right? right. And what did I do? Oh, yeah. Is she she's crushed, right? I love the example you just gave. So that's what you're talking about when you're mm -hmm. saying fill the gray space. Yes. Yeah. So mm. take yourself out of your and temperament go meet them at and theirs. go meet them in their temperament. Look oh, through a different at. lens yeah. right. and remember that it's a choice. So let me ask you what Kathleen just asked. Who are you curious about? You already know enough to figure out the temperament of most people in your life. What are their strengths? What words do you hear them saying a lot? How do they react on a tough day? Once you know their temperament, it's like you have a cheat sheet. You know the innate needs of their temperament so you can do what Paul suggested, speak according to their needs. You can choose to translate your words into their language. I've learned how to do that when my wife needs some space. I'm wired to want to work it out right away, to fix the problem, talk it over, and make a plan now. But I know my wife, who's a blue, she needs time to process. So I translate my words. Now I say, I can tell you're upset, so I'm gonna give you some space. But I'm gonna come back later and we'll talk it out. I still say what I mean, just in a way that considers her needs. Thinking about temperament will for sure help the words you say, but the piece that may really be life-changing is how it helps the words you hear. Because once you know someone's temperament, you know how they'll react when their needs aren't filled. The manipulating words we talked about last time explain so many relational dynamics. Your colleague's moodiness or your dad's tough tone. Knowing God wired them that way makes it easier to understand those reactions and give them a little bit of grace. That's what happened in my friend's marriage. She's yellow and comes from a big, loud, yellow family. Her husband is blue. So picture family gatherings with her side. Lots of people, lots of noise, no particular plan. It was bad for him. For years, they fought over every family get together until their temperaments made sense of the whole thing. Understanding why it was so hard for him to hang with her outgoing family meant she could stop taking his reaction personally. He liked her family. He was just wired to need space and silence. What was a source of conflict is now a chance to consider each other's needs. Now listen, they still have to talk through it when it's time to head home for the holidays, but understanding the why behind their reaction gives them a little bit more grace for each other. There are situations like that in every relationship, every friendship, and every office. So we hope this week you'll give it a shot, that you'll figure out the temperament of at least someone else in your life and see if adjusting the words you speak even just a little, doesn't, like Paul said, benefit all.
So I hope you found that beneficial. Uh, years ago, I told you I would close with one parting thought. Years ago, uh, I had the privilege to have a coach through the United Methodist Conference. They were going to pay for this for me, for us. And our first session was on Good Friday. So it was a stressful day anyway. Like I was trying to get ready for Easter and all that kind of stuff. And, and in my session with her, I mean, we were doing the introductory stuff. And at some point in the session, she goes, you know, you're a lot. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm a lot. Uh, I didn't have the courage in that moment to say, what do you mean I'm a lot? And uh, she went on to explain, you know, some other things. And so for the rest of the day, and like, and I cried about that, by the way. I'm like, oh, I'm a lot. Oh, my gosh. You know, blah, blah, blah. And so... Um, for the rest of the day into the weekend, I'm like, I'm a lot, I'm a lot, I'm a lot. And it just kept eating away at me. And then, you know, Easter came and went and the next several months just, you know, passed by and I kept coaching with her. And, you know, every time we would learn more about each other and I grew to learn who she was and is and now my coaching relationship with her is invaluable and uh, something I will always keep and cherish. She's an amazing coach. But in that time, I had to figure out why she would say that to me, what I was doing to be a lot, and that maybe a lot to her was a compliment. It was not how I heard it, but it was how she said it. Because I was willing to uh, stick in there, and I frankly didn't have a choice at the beginning because we weren't paying for it. It was a gift to us from the conference. Uh, I didn't have a choice to go away. If it had been on my dime, I probably would have said, I don't like that. That hurt my feelings. And then just cease the relationship. But because I had to stay in it and had to explore the why behind her, behind me, now I have this relationship that absolutely uh, is just invaluable to me. It's up to us to figure out the why. The why we do and think the way we think. The why our words impact others. And then it's up to us to figure out how we can be the best version of ourselves to give others what they need. Look at this verse from Paul one last time. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, so that it may benefit those who listen. The way that we start this is by beginning with ourselves. We have to figure out who we are and then how we relate. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you have innately wired us to be these amazing people and creatures to interact with one another. God, give us wisdom and insight so that we can build healthy and strong and wonderful relationships with each other. Thank you for being a God that teaches us grace and wisdom and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Take a look at this video. At the end of the day, remember this. No matter how biting or hurtful others' words are, they don't define us. Our self-worth is found in knowing that we are innately created to be amazing people by the love of God. And we carry that love in us every single moment of every single day. Go be great. And remember, relationships matter. Use our words kindly and carefully. Go in peace. Amen.